This is Multiplying. M.I.P. With Masamela Matsumo. Mark Thompson. Get woke. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to have with us today an ally in the struggle. We were just joking before we started. This is probably one of the first and only times we've seen one another not in the streets. Uh, so this is a true warrior and freedom fighter that we most times bump into each other when we're out at a demonstration or along the barricades or getting arrested or what have you. Uh, and so this will give us a chance to talk and probably give an opportunity for you all to be introduced in this audience to this great organization and the work it does all in and all of us talking in these ways talking now even uh for the sake of solidarity uh and the beloved community that dr king was killed trying to establish joining us now from an organization known as the workers circle we want to welcome ann tobeck and how are you welcome to make it plain i'm doing great and uh, I am, as I said before, I'm so grateful and honored to be speaking with you, Reverend Mark. It's um, it's incredible to be here, and of course, to be uh, when we whenever we get together, I'm so uh, empowered by by our solidarity and by your words. Well, well, thank you for saying so, and and I yours as well. First of all, and why don't we do this? Let's talk about the worker circle. Mm -hmm. what it does, and a bit about its history, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, and the history is key to where we are today. So I love um, starting there. But actually, I'll start today and say, uh, today, the Workers' Circle is a Jewish social justice organization that's activism, that really engages in collective activism, strong partnerships, uh, and engagement around um, progressive values, around our roots. Um, and the roots come from uh, our founding in 1900 by Eastern European immigrant activists, all of whom came to the United States from Poland, Russia, Ukraine, Lithuania, although so many of these countries were one at the time, around you know, 1900 to 1925. They came here escaping violence, persecution, discrimination, um, issues that still resonate today, and most important, they came to the United States for the democracy and the freedoms and liberties that they believed it held by the people for the people. Um, yeah. Well, th that that's that's very important um, because we know yeah. that this, as Dr. King would say, this long march toward justice. Um, can take a long time um, and and that people came, it makes a difference, people fleeing persecution, coming to this country and still being involved in the ongoing fights against persecution and the ongoing fights against social justice today. Yes, and I wanna draw a um, spotlight on the fact that the members, our earliest members, our founding members, were members of a group called the Jewish Labor Bund um, in Eastern Europe. And this was, this was um, an organization founded in the late 1800s in part to defend Jewish communities from attacks on them, from pogroms, which um, were in many ways uh, similar to some of the lynchings and the attacks that, that we now see and have seen in the South. Um, these were in government sponsored or community um, attacks on Jewish communities where the entire community might be burned down, people brutally murdered, um, raped. It was uh, a terrible situation. And this Jewish labor bund was created to um, for armed defense of these communities. And they expanded to uh, serving as a labor organizing organization across Eastern Europe. So then they come to the United States um, for this freedom, for you know, for, for personal freedoms, they also had a strong foundation, a strong value that when they fought, it wasn't just for themselves; it had to be for everyone. So discrimination anywhere was a discrimination everywhere, and that was a, a hallmark of who they were. So when they came to the United States, they didn't just come to the United States saying we're going to fight for Jewish freedom; it was for all freedom. And something uh, we know is that one of the first um, affronts to them in the United States, one of the affronts 
was how they saw uh, people of color treated. They immediately had, uh, they felt a connection to what they saw as the brutalization of people of color in the United States. And so um, they fought for many things. Um, they fought for immigrant rights because of, of course it was very critical to them that their own families, their own communities have access to the United States. And of course our borders were never open um, without uh, threat of being closed. They fought against fascism because of, of course fascism authoritarianism rule was what drove them in part out of their home countries. And they fought for the democracy and the right to vote. Um, and they were very involved in the early labor movement in the United States in the early 1900s. Um, and one other um, in interesting, I think, fact is that in the early days, once they had achieved some labor um, victories in for, between 1910 and 1915, this is primarily immigrant women members and men, many of them transitioned into the suffrage movement fighting for women's rights. And then it was a natural fit that later on they transitioned into the civil rights movement. This was always, you know, the right to vote, the right, the right of democracy was a key piece of their activism. And we've always been an activist focused organization. Um, and of course, now we define as a social justice organization. So I, 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 I love to go through the history. Let me just ask, you, you use the term labor bund. Am I pronouncing yeah. that correctly? So yeah. what does that word actually translate to? It's, it actually was, it was an organization, the Jewish Labor Bund, um, B-U-N-D. And that, I, I may be giving it a Yiddish uh, pronunciation because Yiddish was their language of choice right. um, in, in Eastern Europe. It was an, an organized um, group who, whose focus became on um, the rights of workers across Eastern right. Europe. So when they came here, they actually joined groups like the ILGWU and right. Amalgamate. So they became involved in the union movement. People like Sidney Hillman were Bundists in, in Eastern okay. Europe. I know, I it's funny, um, my great grandfather was uh, uh, emigrated from the Ukraine in the early 1900s and became an activist in the ILGWU. And um, I, didn't, I didn't grow up learning about the Jewish labor bund, but it was a major piece of history at the time. So it's something, we're just we're just reconnecting with um, I'm just reconnecting with. But of course, the worker circle has always been connected. And and it's you know, it's it makes sense because there's always been the intersection between cultural issues, social justice, civil rights and labor. Yes. And organized yes. labor. And, and yes. so if if folk got here right at the turn of the century, I mean, we know what was going on and what was not happening on oh, the yeah. laborers. Mm -hmm. Lolly women, uh, even here in New York, we're in New York today, folks. Um, uh, so that's that's very very important. You also mentioned Yiddish. Part yeah. of the the mission, and and obviously still is, is for the Jewish community to maintain ties to its roots. Yes. So you all focus on the culture and the language of Yiddish, too, don't you? Yes. And the history, uh, the activist tradition and the tradition of resistance. That's something that many people don't um, connect the dots on for good reason. I think um, it, it's too often been the, you know, fallen by the wayside. But our Yiddish tradition is this tradition of, of, of um, resistance and um and the and being part of a fight for for equality um it's very much embedded in that history and you can see it again and again and again through world war ii uh when for example this jewish labor bund you know the people who were still there were part of some of the very famous uprisings that are still spoken about for example the warsaw ghetto uprising they were one of the leading organizations on the ground fighting the nazis so um, I want to mention something that really struck me. So I just came back from an incredible um, march in um, Alabama. We marched. Um, there was a week long um, march from Selma to Montgomery right. with different organizations taking on different legs of the march. And the Worker Circle was so honored to be marching with Black Voters Matter. They were the they, they were the um, leading organization. We were a co-sponsor. 
And um, during the break, we uh, uh, we had a, a, a learning session during lunch, and a group of um, uh, people who had been um, activists on the ground in Selma to Montgomery 57 years ago spoke to us about um, how um, white um, landowners had thrown all, had had basically evicted. Uh, black workers, black uh, residents from their homes during that period of time if they participated. And something we they touched on in discussing was um, that during they, they lived in a tent city um, on borrowed land, on, 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 um, on land that had been um, provided to them by somebody who was sympathetic to the movement. And they talked about armed resistance. And something that strikes me in um, in in Black history and Jewish history is very often the fact that we do have traditions of resistance and, in fact, armed resistance is often forgotten. Um, our people were very involved. We we have traditions of strong activism. Um, we, so I think that's something we need to bring to the forefront altogether. Um, and remember, like. Um, many of our traditions, we have different traditions of culture, of heritage, but activism is a key connector. More MIP right after this. It means a lot to have your presence at these yeah. events, and, and you all were very prominent with us on that march. But that also speaks to your point. Historically, uh, many of the civil rights struggles, especially those in the 60s, were, were won because of the solidarity that existed between our communities, weren't yes, there? Yes, yes. And I actually want to take it one step further and say most of the great social change movements are only have only seen victories when it comes through broad and strong partnerships and coalitions. And that is, of course, one of the most important, the civil rights victories that were achieved um, in the 1960s. Uh, I'm, I'm were of course part of a strong partnership. And right now there's nowhere that the worker circle want, would rather be than standing shoulder to shoulder, which with such incredible and inspiring activists. Yeah. Um, well, it, and, and we're all happy to stand shoulder to shoulder with you. And, and I think we should acknowledge folks, when we talk about the, the current assault on voting rights, there's sometimes the assumption that it exclusively affects African Americans or Latinos, but it written in all of these state laws, there are a lot of little things too mm -hmm. that affect not just voters of color and not just low income voters, but but women yes. and seniors. I mean, some of these states and are thwarting the ability to get absentee ballots in the mail. Look at what just happened. Back. Yeah, look at what happened in Texas, where didn't they discount? Didn't they throw out like forty percent of the absentee ballots in this last uh, right. primary? I mean, yeah, thwarting, uh, rejecting the the scope of this is astronomical, and I mean, it 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 hits so many populations, including the disabled, um, preventing access to to easy access to the ballots. But most of all, when people hear about this, they need to understand that it impacts us all. Yeah. Um, the last election would have been very different if all of those vote, uh, all of the votes that now um, are likely to be discarded or, or prevented um, goes through. I mean, elections are going to change if people can't get to the ballot. These are we're talking about millions of voters who are likely to be obstructed. Yeah. at this moment. So it, it's it's a crisis in you know now. It, it, it's not in the making, it's happened. And I think it's the biggest, one of the biggest crises. It's the biggest crisis of our democracy. It's hard to parse out how many crises we're facing right now. But I believe the right to vote, this is a pillar of our democracy and, and it's in, in immediate jeopardy. And I think we all, everybody should be taking a stand. Um, not just, you know, there's so many reasons to do it because of the overt discrimination, of the overt bigotry, of the hust. But it, this is a, 
a grab um, at our democracy for in favor of authoritarian rule. And and what and it it's almost as if what some of your ancestors and those who immigrants came here escaping persecution in Eastern mm-hmm. Europe, it's like there are those in America who want to take us back to that time with the authoritarianism, with the fact. I think so. And, and, and we saw this during the last presidential administration. We saw authoritarian rule on the streets. We, we saw, we, and, and it wasn't, it, uh, we saw overt racism, bigotry, some, you know, terrible attacks. We saw anti-Muslim. We saw and we saw an anti-LGBTQ, which is continuing. Look at what they're doing um, across the across the South and other places um, to the LGBTQ community. I mean, what had just happened in Florida um, with the um, "Don't Don't Say Gay" um, legislation. I mean, we're we're experiencing a, you know attacks that we we wouldn't have imagined eight years ago. Um, and we saw a, a huge rise in anti-Semitic attacks in those days. Um, from our perspective at the Workers' Circle, all of these um, attacks came from the same roots. So we can't we 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 can't um, we can't cure any one of them without curing all of them. So our approach is to fight um, to fight all of these forms of um, discrimination, but. Something that's very important to us now is to be part of the national movement to end systemic racism, because that really is, I think, also an overarching um, issue that's impacting all of this. And, you know, when systemic racism is allowed to flourish in our country, um, I think we should assume that that every other marginalized group is going to be impacted um, and, and going to be pushed down alongside it. And we we shouldn't kid ourselves that we're not that that any of these pieces um, can be allowed to exist without without um, a degradation of our entire democracy and society. No, very very well put, folks. This is the fight that we're in, and and let me just say there are those um, in this authoritarian setting, ladies and gentlemen, that do not want our communities to be unified, uh, that want to continue to draw out division and set us against one another. But what Ann just said is right. Um, For every assault against the LGBTQIA community, it is also an assault on the black community, the Jewish community, the Latino community, and and vice versa. When there are acts of anti-Semitism or violence at synagogues, that affects us all. And this is why we must stand together. And it's, it's no... You know, we talk a lot about what happened in the aftermath of the, of the civil rights movement as we approach, uh, as we're in the season of of Dr. King's um, martyrdom, the anniversary of his martyrdom and ascension. Um, by the way, and I don't I, people say anniversary of his assassination. I don't like. I don't think you anniversarize an assassination. I prefer to say anniversary yeah. of his martyrdom and ascension. Mm. Uh, we should not be naive because we talk about what happened to him, and we talked about co- talk about COINTELPRO, but I also think there was an agenda because of the solidarity that existed between the black and Jewish community and the civil rights movement. Abraham Heschel, you yeah. marched with us this month, but Abraham Heschel and other rabbis were marching in 1965. Yeah. I, I don't think we should be naive. There was also an agenda to say, well, let's, we got to break that up. We yeah. can't have them together. And, you know, and, and so what the worker circle is doing now, folks, with Black Voters Matter and all of us in the civil rights movement is is rekindling that. But let's not be naive that, you know, that's something we have to continue to uphold, yeah. defend uh, and 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 struggle around, lest there be those in these authoritarian settings who would want to continue to set us apart. So, you know, Ann and I are just chit chatting. Yeah. Uh, 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 this is important work. Mm-hmm. And all of us have to see. And I'm telling you something else too. And lastly, I think people also should understand we're talking about voting rights, which overlaps and intersects all of this. But folks, and this is just this is just two constituencies. We won't even get into all the others. I don't have all those numbers, but we know this: ninety percent of black voters vote the same way as seventy percent of Jewish voters. 
So wait a minute. And we don't meet on that. It's not a meeting. And I don't call a meeting and say, hey, black right. voters, Jewish voters, y'all vote this way. That's even organic, which means we have more naturally in common than we often dialogue about. That is just literally how, am I, am I right, Ann? Oh, I, I think you're right now. I have to say, I work for a 501c3, so we don't tell people we're issue based. Absolutely, but, absolutely. And I think it's, but I can just counter it and say the issues are similar and the issues are critical to us all. Um, yes, we have so much more in common than I think is elevated by the news media and others. And I, I can't, um, I can't uh, support what you said enough, Reverend Mark. It's, Keeping us divided is definitely on the agenda of the right wing fanatics. I mean, we are so much stronger together and we're more powerful together. And not just us, as you said, it's it's bringing in the Asian community and um, and every other community out there, the, the Arab, the Muslim community. I mean, all of these different communities, we are weaker when we're when we're divided. And I think there's some intentional divisions that are being set up. and. When you see how we how we work together and how we march together, um, I don't think it's being properly uh, presented by the media out there. And I think I think there's more um, there's more more uh, eyeballs attracted when it's about division versus be standing together. So for people who are watching here, I mean, let's stand together. And if we have differences, let's examine them. There's no reason we shouldn't have real discourse. Good dialogue is also something we should embrace. We don't have to stand together on every issue, but we should be able to talk together and learn together and grow together. Um, indeed, so indeed. And, 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 and all stand uh, with and for each other in, in solidarity. Uh, us, absolutely. Uh, all these communities. Yes. We'll go. We, we will ascend to you know to leadership together, or we'll fail together. This is. I want to you know just also comment on you were talking about you know we look at the uh, of the the last civil rights mu movement, and we're really in a renewed movement. This is a lifetime commitment. I think we all have to make and pass on to our children. And one of the things we do at the Worker Circle is we're training high school and college students and families to pass these values of activism, a commitment to lifelong activism, generation to generation. I think one of our learnings has to be, we can never um, rest on our laurels. I am uh, focused, as I know you are, on the next victory, the voting rights legislation, um, defeating these anti, uh, the, these terrible voter suppression laws that are, are being um, approved state by state by state. Uh, once we have those victories, we have to be committed to continuing this dialogue and continuing our activism because we have to presume there's always going to be people who are looking to take these freedoms away. Um, and that's something I think we should all commit to as well. We, we have to, activism doesn't have to be a negative. It's a positive in your life. It, you can do it alongside um, your day-to-day -day world and it really empowers every part of your, your life. So I think lifetime activism is something we should embrace together. That's right. It was Frederick Douglass who said it's all about eternal vigilance. Yes. Uh, yes. And and we're going to do that. And and Worker Circle is definitely doing that. Continuing oh, yeah. this legacy uh, since um, the turn of the century in 1900. We're in another century now, aren't we? So that will be that. We are. Century. This is our second century. <laughs> second century. That's amazing. That's amazing. And wonderful yeah. history. Folks, go to the website. I'm, I'm fascinated with the history. Read about the history there. It's very well documented. And also all the issues that the Worker Circle uh, is involved in. And again, everywhere I've been in the past year fighting for voting rights, alongside Black Voters Matter. Worker Circle has been there as well, and we're thankful for that. Well, Go to Circle. We wouldn't be anywhere else. <laughs> and, and I know it. We love it and can't wait to uh, can't wait to see you again. Folks, we invite you to go to circle.org, uh, follow, find out more, get involved yes. uh, a, as well. There's so many ways to get involved, and, and Worker Circle offers that as well, circle.org. If I could just put one plug in, I think every Wednesday right now, every Wednesday evening, we do um, phone banking to different states. Um, and what we're doing is, and we work with Black Voters Matter and uh, the Center for Common Ground. And we do these uh, weekly phone banks. We do it together. So you get on a Zoom, you talk, and then you make your calls. Um, and it's all about empowering voters who are being uh, 
subject to suppression in different states, just making sure they know how to cast their ballots where they can go. It's, it's a great way if you have an hour on a Wednesday evening, you'll see that information on our website too. Just come in and join in. No, that's important, folks. Yes, please, circle.org, uh, get involved. Uh, I know many have busy schedules and work, but we can all phone bank from right where we are at home. Exactly. And, it's and a fantastic, um, it's very easy and it's really, everyone loves it. I love it. You, you just make a few calls. The people who answer the phones couldn't be, I mean, almost always, they're thrilled to talk to you. You, you get a chance to talk and, and learn more about people, even as you're, you're helping, you're directly helping them. And just if you go to Workers Circle on Facebook, we're also on Twitter, just to keep t in touch because we do a lot of activism and we're always um, happy to welcome people who want to join us. And it, it doesn't mean folks, Ann and I see each other out in the streets all over the country, but we both live in New York. Yeah. And so, again, we got so pray that we will find a way to see one another here in New York and grab a bite, not just on the streets, in the streets and in jail. Uh, yeah. it's, it's good to have relationships with people outside of jail, too. You know, it's, that's healthy. It's all about <laughs> creating community together. And, and of course, food is a good part of that. That's right. That's right. So uh, th this is this is a coming together for the two of us uh, yeah. as individuals and appreciate your work, appreciate your time for being here with us today. Thank you. Uh, and and I'm with I'm with Worker Circle all the way. OK. <laughs> and, and right back at you. We'll, we'll be we'll be together through through the next victory. I'm looking forward to celebrating. <laughs> Folks, check out circle dot org. Thanks for getting woke and listening to Make It Plain. As always, perform an act of kindness on behalf of an elder or young person. Write a letter to a sister brother who just so happens to find her or himself incarcerated. Offer libations to the ancestors upon whose sturdy shoulders we all now stand, and above all, give thanks to the God of your understanding by whatever name you call her and him. All God asks of us is that we give each other love. Thanks for giving MIP love, and please remember to subscribe and give us a five-star rating. If all hearts and minds are clear, it has been made plain. Nice buns, soft, fluffy, and ultra low net carbs. Discover Hero Bread, the delicious ultra low net carb bread with incredible taste and texture. Hero Bread has zero grams of sugar and is under 100 calories per serving, plus high in fiber with 5 to 10 grams of protein per serving. Available on Amazon.com, Walmart.com, and at Hero.co. That's H E R O.co. Delicious ultra low net carb Hero Bread buns and tortillas. Soft and fluffy, high in fiber, and with zero grams of sugar, up to 10 grams of protein, coming in at under 100 calories. Order today at Hero.co and use the code AH10 to get 10% off your first purchase. That's AH10 at Hero.co, H-E-R-O dot C-O. Order from Hero.co now and get 10% off your first purchase with promo code AH10. That's 10% off with code AH10, H-E-R-O dot C-O.